Welcome to Bible Insights with Wayne Conrad. God's Word is a lamp to our feet and a light to our path. Today's topic, God's cloud. God's cloud in the wilderness. You know, the Bible uses a lot of imagery, but it's imagery based on actual events. And these images and the events carry significance far beyond their original meaning. So I want us to think about the cloud of God's presence in the wilderness that first appeared in the land of Egypt at the Red Sea, just before the Red Sea. This is where we have the first statement about God being present in a cloud over or around his people. And then this cloud imagery, this cloud reality is carried on for the next 40 years as the people of the Hebrews make their way through the wilderness to Canaan land. Now, let's read that account in Exodus chapter 13, where God first makes his manifestation appearance in a cloud at the Red Sea. Perhaps you remember the story, and that is that the people of Israel have now been delivered by God, especially through the last of the the plagues, the tenth plague, the death of the firstborn, at which point the Egyptians were quite ready for them to leave. In fact, they loaded them up with goods and basically told them to get on out of here before anything worse happens to us. Now, that's a very loose paraphrase interpretation, okay? But the people of Israel leave. But God doesn't let them go the short route. He doesn't let them go up through the land that's closest to Egypt. He sends them down a southern route. And in fact, he puts them before the Red Sea. And so after a while, the Pharaoh begins to shake himself and think, what am I doing? My whole labor force is leaving here. And he decides to get his army or a big portion of his army and to pursue the Israelites in the wilderness to stop them from crossing in to the wilderness. And so here's God's people. They're in front of the Red Sea. There are mountains on two sides. And then there is the host of the Egyptians coming behind them to overtake them, to recapture them, and haul them back to the slave pits in Egypt. It's at this point, you see, that the people cry out to God, and God answers by a cloud. A cloud appears. And that cloud appears with lightning, with fire, and with extreme intense light. A pillar of cloud and of fire. Let me read it to you. Exodus chapter 13, beginning at verse 17. When Pharaoh let the people go, God did not lead them by way of the land of the Philistines, although that was near. For God said, lest the people change their minds when they see war and return to Egypt. But God led the people around by way of the wilderness toward the Red Sea. And the people of Israel went up out of the land of Egypt, equipped for battle. Moses took the bones of Joseph with him, for Joseph had made the sons of Israel solemnly swear, saying, God will surely visit you, and you shall carry up my bones with you from here. And they moved on from Succoth, and he camped at Etham on the edge of the wilderness. And the Lord went before them by day in a pillar of cloud to lead them along the way, and by night in a pillar of fire to give them light, that they might travel by day and by night. The pillar of cloud by day and the pillar of fire by night did not depart from before the people. Now, as the Egyptian host is coming toward the Israelites, and they cried out to Moses, what are we going to do? God told Moses to stand before the sea and to stretch out his hands. And when he did so, the wind of God blew the waters apart. And the people of Israel went over on dry land. And when the Egyptians tried to pursue them, they came into the sea path, but the waters came back the next day and drowned them. And so the people of Israel escaped from the land of Egypt and began their wilderness journey. The cloud, God's cloud of his presence, God's cloud of his protection over his people. Now, this is a very important image 
and a very important historical reality, let's think about what happened to the children of Israel. The Hebrews, you see, went out. And within a year and a half to two years, they're at the border of Canaan. And so at the very border of Canaan, they could go in and possess the land. But the people became afraid because the majority report came back from the the spies saying that the people are strong and they're great and mighty and we're just small people. But two of the Hebrew men who went over, Caleb and Joshua, said, yes, all that's true. But remember that God made a promise and remember what God did at the Red Sea and how God led us through and he will do the same here. Now I'm bringing all this to your attention because this cloud of God's presence is a cloud of God's grace for a people wholly undeserving of the rescue that God gave them. Because you see, after they crossed the Red Sea and began their wilderness journey, they went through and they had a great time of rejoicing and praising God. They read, they let the rafters, there were no rafters out in the wilderness, but they just lit up the, the clouds and the the sky with great sounds of rejoicing as Miriam led them in the great song of victory recorded for us in Exodus 15. But you see, in just a few days, they became hungry. (laughs) They said, we're out of food. In just a few days, three, three days in fact, they came to some water. But the water was bitter. And Because the water was bitter, they didn't think they could drink it. And so the people began something that they would continue for the next 40 years. They grumbled at Moses. They grumbled at the Lord God. And they said to Moses, what shall we drink? And Moses cried out to Yahweh, and the Lord appeared to him and showed him a log. He threw it into the water, and the water became sweet. Okay? Okay. In other words, the water was, you could say, sick. But the throwing of the log into the water made it sweet and drinkable. And after that, they came to Elam, where there were 12 springs of water, 70 palm trees, and they encamped there. But then later, as they began their moving out from Elam, they get to the point that they are hungry. This is only a month and a half after they departed from the land of Egypt. And the whole congregation of the people of Israel grumbled against Moses and Aaron in the wilderness. And the people said, Would that we had died by the hand of the Lord in the land of Egypt, when we sat by the meat pots and ate bread to the full. For you brought us out into this wilderness to kill this whole assembly with hunger. Can you imagine this? These people whom God protected while the plagues fell on the Egyptians, whom God led through the wilderness, I mean through the Red Sea into the wilderness, on the way to Canaan, They forget so quickly the great power of God that he exerted in their behalf. And they grumble against the Lord and against his servant. But I'm telling you about the cloud. Because though the people grumbled, though the people sinned, though the people are not doing what they ought to do, God's cloud of protection and guidance remained over them. Oh, what grace our God did show to them. And oh, what grace God also shows to us. Now, we have a hymn that we sing. It's an old hymn. You know, sometimes there's some real value in in some of the old hymns because they tap into this biblical imagery. It's one that's lasted a long time. It was written in the 1700s by William Williams. And it's known as Guide me, O thou great Jehovah. Now, Jehovah is is the way that people sought to pronounce the name of God, although we know now that the more correct way of pronouncing his name is Yahweh. But Jehovah sounds better as far as music is concerned. So we keep it, or people just take it out. But when you take it out, you're forgetting that God has a personal name, and his personal name is very important in his redemption. God did not save us by some impersonal means. God personally is the redeemer of his people. But let me read, let me read this hymn to you for our thought today. Here's the hymn. 
Guide me, O thou great Jehovah, pilgrim through this barren land. I am weak, but you are mighty. Hold me with your powerful hand. Bread of heaven, bread of heaven, feed me till I want no more. Now that should evoke in you the imagery of God feeding the people. And this is found in Exodus chapter 16. So this is just the 15th day of the second month after they had departed from the land of Egypt. Now this is a very important chapter in the book of Exodus and in God's revelation. Because it's at this time that God began to give them the manna from heaven. At that same time, he instituted for them the Sabbath. Now, the Sabbath was unknown before then and was not observed before then. But here, God gave them the manna from heaven with instructions. Six days a week, you can gather the manna, but you can't keep it overnight or to breed worms. On the sixth day, you are together for two days You're to keep it overnight and eat it on the seventh day. It will not breed worms. So it was a miraculous provision of this bread from heaven that sustained the people throughout their wilderness journey. God's provision of food for his people. And God instituted at that time the Sabbath. Now, why did he do that? Well, he's going to reveal it later that he gave them the Sabbath as a sign of the covenant that he's going to cut with them at Mount Sinai where the cloud of God's glory is also present. But here, we we hear the cloud. Okay, again, Exodus chapter 16. And as soon as Aaron spoke to the whole congregation of the people of Israel about the manna, they looked toward the wilderness, and behold, the glory of Yahweh appeared in the cloud. And Yahweh said to Moses, I've heard the grumbling of the people of Israel. Say to them, at twilight you shall eat meat. In the morning you shall be filled with bread. And then you shall know that I am Yahweh your God. That evening the quail came. In the morning the manna started coming. And it persisted throughout their time of wilderness journey. In Exodus chapter 17, we have the second imagery that's also found in this hymn, Guide Me, O Thou Great Jehovah. So let me read that to you. It says, All the congregation of the people of Israel moved on from the wilderness of sin by stages according to the commandment of Yahweh and camped at Rephidim, but there was no water for the people to drink. Therefore the people quarreled with Moses and said, Give us water to drink. And Moses said, why do you quarrel with me? Why do you test Yahweh? But the people thirsted there for water, and the people grumbled against Moses and said, why did you bring us up out of Egypt to kill us? To kill us and our children and our livestock with thirst. And so Moses cried to the Lord, what shall I do with these people? They're almost ready to stone me. And Yahweh said to Moses, pass on before the people, taking with you some of the elders of Israel, and take in your hand the staff with which you struck the Nile, and go. Behold, I will stand before you there on the rock at Horeb, and you shall strike the rock, and the water shall come out of it, and the people would drink. And Moses did so in the sight of the elders of Israel. Now, before that, this is the second time they've asked for water. Because the first time they asked for water was soon after they came over the land. And that's found in Exodus chapter 15, where they came to Marah, And there they could not drink the water of Marah because it was bitter. Therefore, it was named Marah, bitterness. And the people grumbled against Moses, saying, What shall we drink? He cried to Yahweh, and the Lord showed him a log. And he threw it into the water, and the water became sweet. So God provided water for them on these two occasions, early on in the Exodus travel. In the hymn, Guide me, O thou great Jehovah. Here's the second stanza. Open now the crystal fountain, whence the healing stream does flow. Let the fire and cloudy pillar lead me all my journey through. Strong deliverer, strong deliverer, be, O oh be still, my strength and my shield. Now, that song captures 
these two events in the Word of God about the cloud of God's presence. The cloud of God's presence that provided protection for the people, divided guidance for the people, and provided from the glory and power of God the necessities of the people for their journey. Now, the the journey of the people of Israel is a real historical journey. These are real people that God delivered, and he brought them all the way to the to the borders of Canaan. Some 40 years later, they're looking there. Now, it was only a year, a year and a half to two years later they reached the land, but because of their unbelief, they turned back from the land and would not go in. And we find that recorded for us in Deuteronomy. And therefore, the first generation of the Israelites were put under the judgment, and they had to stay in the wilderness until that whole generation died, except for the two of the spies who reported that God was able to carry them through. But God's cloud, God's cloud remained with this rebellious people throughout all of those years. You know, God is a God of great power, a God of great glory, and he gives us that which we do not even deserve. But how much better if it's his people? We look to him in expectant faith, knowing that he's there, knowing that he does provide, knowing that he does protect, and knowing that he will lead us all the way, all the way to the land of promise, to the land of eternal delights where we will live with him forever. This has been Wayne Conrad. With Bible insights, remember God's cloud, his cloud of provision, his cloud of protection, his cloud of presence.